Hey y'all. How's that? That was good. That was good, right? All right. Hey y'all. Welcome back to Jen Lee in the RV. And we are going to be talking about travel nursing um, this week. We are travel nurses. If y'all are new, we travel around in our RV. And yeah, so this is just if you want to get started as a travel nurse or if you already are one, just our experiences of it. And stay tuned till the end because I have a great question for y'all. Let's get into the video. So you decided to become a travel nurse. Good job, that was the first step. The next step is to find an agency. And there are a million different agencies out there. How do you know which one is best? The biggest mistake people make is just signing up with one agency. That limits your options. And the best way to do it is just sign up with multiple agencies. I know it's a lot of paperwork signing up with each agency, but it really opens up the door to all these different places. You know, there's no one agency that has a contract to every hospital out there. So by signing up with multiple agencies, you really can go anywhere you want. Because if you want to go to a specific city, for instance, Los Angeles, you know, there's a lot of companies that have contracts in Los Angeles, but, you know, they don't cover the same hospital. Also, if you just want to go to a, like a state, so let's say you want to go to Washington State, you can tell all of your agencies, all four or five of them, be like, hey, I want to go to Washington, so all four of them are looking for jobs, and then you can figure out which area is best for you. So you found the hospital, and you've, let's say, have three different agencies for that particular hospital. So how do you figure out, you know, which one to go with? How do you wheel and deal? I just signed the contract, he wheels and deals. <laughs> the best way to do it is to start a bidding war. You know, when all three agencies give you their offer, that first offer is usually not the best offer. There's always room. You can say, you know, this company is offering more, but if you have proof, for instance, that will get you a lot further. Um, for instance, you know, when, they, when one company sends you like a breakdown of what their payout is gonna be for th this hospital you're going to, um, you can take that offer they sent you and take it to a different agency and say, hey, this is exactly what they're giving me, you know? Either you top it, or I'm just going to go with them. <laughs> you know, and for the most part, if you really like that company, you can just say match it. But you know, you want to go for the money, so obviously you want them to top it. Yeah. So yeah, that's pretty much it. It's just using those three agencies and trying to like work a deal out. Like maybe they have better stipend, maybe they have better hourly. So it just depends on that. And also look at the area that you're in. If you're in LA, you should be making a lot more than if you were in Florida or something. So you gotta make sure you know like the area and how much it's gonna cost to live there. And if you run into an issue where only one of your agencies has a contract to a hospital that you wanna go to, there's still wiggle room to negotiate. Um, they'll, they'll give you an offer. Um, they'll try to say, we'll give you a stipend bonus of this, this, and this. Um, but you can always negotiate for extra dollar or two on that hourly rate, a completion bonus. And say if you're one of those people that work a lot, you know, try to get an extra hundred bucks for every overtime shift that you work. There's always room to negotiate. And what's, what are they gonna say, no? Then you're still getting the offer that they gave you. So just keep asking, yeah. just ask. Or a bonus to also get there, you know, if you're going all the way to LA and you live in New York, maybe a little extra, like, hey, I'm traveling across the country, I need a little more, you can always do that as well. Yeah, the standard is usually 500 bucks for travel reimbursement, mm -hmm. but I've signed up with other companies that's given me like 750 or even a thousand. So really, there's always room to negotiate. Always room for more, just like Jello. <laughs> What's a stipend? Speaking of stipends, a quick breakdown of your paycheck is pretty much going to be you have an hourly rate, which is going to be about 20, 21 bucks an hour, and then you have your stipends, which is going to be the tax-free portion of your pay. That's really where the bulk of your check is going to come from, yeah. and then that's how travelers make a little bit more money than staff is mainly because it's tax-free portion. Yes. Make sure that you do qualify for those stipends, because if you don't and you start collecting that when you get audited, yeah. you'll be screwed. So. Be sure you qualify for those stipends. Yes. And I'm gonna add a link down low on the yeah. descriptions of the three main things that you need to qualify for to be able to cool. get the stipends. Travel, yeah, and get the stipend so you won't get in trouble with the IRS. And those are the one group of people you don't wanna mess with, man. Yeah. They will take that money. So like for us, we're from Florida. Um, we have driver's license in Florida, our tags for our cars are in Florida, and we have our voters registration in Florida. We have a house in Florida um, that we pay rent on. 
each week or each month. And then what's the third one? Uh, oh, going back. Like you have to have like extended amount of time that you're back in your home state. You're not just away for like five plus years. So we show that, you know, airplane tickets going back, gas going back, just showing in your credit card statements that, you know, something coming from your hometown, anything like that to show the IRS if you're ever audited. But yes, I do go back home on occasion. <laughs> so you have your hospital and your agency. You are about to go. Guess what? You've got homework. Woohoo! <laughs> I don't like homework. <laughs> so with your travel agency, it depends on which one, but with all of them, you do have homework. You obviously have to keep up with your BLS, ACLS, whatever your specialty is, any of those certifications, which is normal if you're a staff member, but they need to make sure you are an adequate nurse, which I know you are, so you're going to do your homework. They just come up with these like online um, questions. I mean, it's uh -huh. usually <laughs> pharmacy and then your specific, you know, if you're tele or if you're ICU or ED or whatever, you're specific with that. And then I think just some ethics ones. I, like, again, it just depends on the agency. It's very basic. Very basic. Um, that's easy. That's the easy part. The rest is um, your physical, your TB test, um, lab work, uh, drug test. And am I missing anything? Pretty much anything else just to make sure that you are ready to work. <laughs> it's a lot of crap, but your agency works with you. You have a specific you know, person that works with you and making sure everything gets done. They sign you up for all of your physical and all of your lab work to get done. They really are pretty great to make sure that it, every duck goes in a line. One big thing that people make a mistake on, just because you have a prescription for a medication. Oh yeah. And if you test positive for it, even if you have a prescription for it, yes. they will delay your start By until two you weeks pass. Sometimes until you pass that test. Yeah. So, so make sure you talk with that if you have a prescription or anything like that. I forgot about that. Yes. Like even for like allergies or something like that, if they pop up in a drug test, don't take them for like a week or two weeks before. Unfortunately, because they will delay you. Even like I said, even if you have that prescription, if you bring in the doctor to show that you have, you know, you take this medication, they'll delay you. So you now it is your first day on the job. You do have orientation with the hospital and it does depend on the hospital what type of orientation. We've had multiple different kinds. For the most part, it's pretty basic. Like, welcome to the hospital. This is who we are. We'll give you computer training for about a day. And sometimes, two. sometimes two. Sometimes two. Um, and then another day on the floor. Um, we've had a place where we, they didn't give us a day on the floor and we had to ask for it We're like we don't know where anything is yeah. you know we don't know how Quick the things rundown. flow it's just just even half a shift yeah just you know just give us something to where we can get familiarized with how things flow where yeah. the things are you know i hate running around on your first day and you're like uh where's iv tubing's at uh i don't know screw it we'll use the same one over again <laughs> but um but yeah some we've had uh orientation that was 12 hours and then we were on the floor uh, going and then we've had orientation where it was a week long so it does just depend on the hospital um and then just ask you know if you're not feeling comfortable about something you know ask for half a shift we've done that before like hey can i just you know follow somebody around just for half a shift just to make sure i'm okay blah 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 so most of the time they've worked with us so yeah it just depends and Cerner are your two most used once you say use systems um so make sure i mean you don't have to know it they do give you training but just so you're aware that those are the two most used that we've at least come across is epic and cerner so. you'll see medizac from time to time but yeah. it's not as common yeah <laughs> epic's great <laughs> homework and orientation are finally over and you get to be on the floor and be a nurse and take care of your patients <laughs> So yes, um, traveling is great, but you go into a new floor and you of course never been there. And let's say you've been a nurse, I don't know, 10 plus years and you're amazing at your job. They don't know that though yet. So remember, just have a positive attitude and know that you're gonna get sometimes maybe a little bit of the worst patients on occasion or just straight up PAR patients, you know, strict ICU, strict, you know, tele patients, med surge, whatever you're in. So just remember though that they need to know that you are an amazing nurse and that you're not a slacker and just, like I said just have that positive attitude help out whenever you can get to know that you know other travelers that are there and staff just let them know how amazing you are they just don't know that yet so yeah that's my first tip another big tip too is just kind of expect the worst and hope for the best yeah. you know if you just <laughs> if you just aim low you can you know they, they can't disappoint you we're already like thinking the worst um, but be ready to float because you're going to be 
the first one to float, you know, yeah. most places, yeah, because you're the you're the extra staff, and they're not gonna float their home staff before you. Yeah. So Which just is not always that. a bad thing. Sometimes, I mean, you know, he had a bad patient the past two days. <laughs> yes, probably one of the worst things you can do or say to the staff is, "This is how we did it back home." Don't say they that. don't like that because no. they're gonna say, "Well, you're not home. You're in my house." <laughs> And you're gonna do it how we do it. If you don't like that. <laughs> so the best thing to do if you want to make friends is just say, I've done this particular thing this way. Is that how y'all do it? You know, all the code of conducts, they're all different everywhere. So just, you know. Just be aware. Yeah, be aware. They yeah. do give it to you in orientation about who wants to read that dang thing. So, um, you know, just keep with, you know, what you know, being a safe nurse. And then if it's something, you know, just ask somebody. I'm the charge nurse, any staff member. I mean, they're always pretty amazing. And one of the best part about traveling and working in different hospitals is you get to see how they do things, yeah, you know. And definitely. you get to pick up on little trip and tricks and how to do yeah. things and uh, which will make you an even better nurse. I have grown so much as a nurse. I think I wouldn't have if I hadn't traveled. Uh, just the most amazing things that I've seen just differently how different hospitals do it and sometimes it's better and sometimes it's you know okay but yeah. So remember this too another tip you can do anything for 13 weeks. I think it breaks down because what three days a week is like 52 days I sometimes even had like a check off list if it wasn't such a great assignment. But anything for 13 weeks, guys, remember that. And if Bye. you don't like them, you get the heck out of there in 13 weeks and go somewhere else. You know, what is it? The, the memes are always like travelers, you know, staff be like this and travelers are, you know, wiping their tears with their money. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, just, just remember that. Have that positive attitude. Don't be a slacker and get the heck out if it's bad. As far as the travel nursing community goes, it's pretty big. Yeah. I mean, when you go into a hospital, it's fairly rare that there's only five. There's usually always, you know, 20, 30 travelers least, in the yeah. hospital. And they usually have some kind of Facebook page or some kind of group mm -hmm. going so you can get connected with them. And the nice part about with travelers is, you know, they're there by themselves usually. They're not, they, they don't party. have families. They don't <laughs> have uh, that kind of obligation yeah. at home. So they're always down to do something. Anything. So, you know, it's so easy to get a group going and go out, do this, explore this, explore that, la 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 la. My so, favorite thing was like, oh, you're a traveler? Okay, now we're best friends. <laughs> it's yeah. always how it goes. <laughs> and I mean, it's still important to be friends with staff. Oh, yeah. I feel like, you know, it's, it's definitely helped out. And, you know, they have yeah. events, they know things that's going on in town that you don't know about, and, you, you know, that they know about. Yeah. It's great, it's fun. Um, but as far as, you know, being able to go out, every weekend if you want to go out you know travelers are usually the ones yeah. they're gonna be like i'm off i'm in <laughs> definitely but the staff know like where to eat uh where to go grocery shopping i mean what else it's basic stuff yeah <laughs> Just... events that are going on like best places to go eat yeah yep. I'm support. always making a list of like, what's the best pizza, Mexican, Asian food, like just making a list down. And they're always really great about, you know, giving you what to do. And also, um, if you're on, most uh, cities have a website. We always go to the website and just figure out like what events are going on or hikes to do or just area, you know, in that area. And we also try to even travel outside of it. You know, we're only working three days. Those four days will travel like an hour or two, depending on whatever cities are around us as well. So you can get the most of one area that you're in. And those websites that she mentioned are probably the best places to look for the events that's going mm -hmm. on in your city. Um, you know, the typical ones are going on Yelp mm -hmm. and, you know, looking at top, pla top 10 places to go visit while you're in Reno. Yeah. But it just gives you like a big general one. Yeah. But the events calendar definitely will give you everything you know, day to day, week to mm -hmm. week, and you can figure out your whole month worth of you know, plans yeah. by going to those event calendars. Definitely. So here's my question for y'all to leave in the comments. If y'all could go anywhere for a year to live and work, where would you go? So leave that in the comments for me. I'm super interested. Mine would be anywhere in England. I I hope someday we end up there. Just to stay for Maybe. a year. <laughs> what would yours be? Fish and chips. Oh, um, I would say Germany. That'd be fun. The language barrier, though. Ooh, maybe Brussels then. They speak English. Yeah, they do speak English there. That would be great. Yeah. So yeah, leave a comment below, guys. That really, really helps my channel. And like this video. 
and uh, subscribe, guys, the red button. I update every week on Thursdays. So yeah, tune in next week for Jen Lee in the RV.